This tutorial introduces the myriad of uh, image channels that are available to us and the different properties that they have and maybe will help us decide on which channel is best to suit the needs of our audience. Uh, with regards to the image channels, we're going to look at three different ones in here. We're going to look at Instagram, Pinterest and Snapchat. And, you know, even if I was to ask a simple question, who uses Instagram, Pinterest and Snapchat with regards to the audience and the different um, factors and the different uh, um, characteristics that the audience would have, I think we all would be able to come up with quite a bit that will lead us to make a decision on which one best suits our particular audience at any, at any particular time. So we'll just jump into these first of all, and we'll have a look at each one individually and then we'll kind of group them together and, and do a little synopsis at the end. So the image based channels, there's lots of them, you know, like the, the, the three or four we're going to look at here are not the only ones. They are the most popular ones, um, but they're not the only uh, image based channels available to us. So we're going to have a look at Instagram first of all, and then Snapchat and then Pinterest. And you can see, you know, um, the number of users is phenomenal up here. They're, they're definitely in the, the top 10 of social media networks over the last number of years. Um, and we can use them in different ways to achieve different things. So um, it, it depends on our audience and depends on the goal of, of our actual campaign. So which one we might use at a particular time or if we want to use a combination. So we'll have a look at Instagram first of all and see what is it and the different characteristics of it. OK, so the first thing we want to look at here is, you know, we all know what Instagram is. In fact, most uh, undergrads, if you're asked which is your channel of choice, your social media channel of choice, they would say Instagram. And you can say, you know, it's over, you know, 800 million uh, active users. Um, what's it used for? Well, it's used for everything from, you know, per, you know, from a business perspective, um, letting people know about your products and upcoming product launches, etc events, promotion codes, which is hugely popular here, and competition. So it's used for these different things to try to let people know what's going on and so on. OK, um, with regards to the age spread, you know, there's a good age spread here, you know, with, with other channels. And we'll see as we come across this in the next couple of minutes that some of the channels are far narrower with regards to the spread of age here. So, you know, uh, the, the main age is from 18 to 49, we can see here, you know, you're talking about, you know, uh, the goods of 80 something percent here um, that, that will be using that. So, you know, there's nothing unusual here. Um, but the, what is important here is that it's not only these people. You will see the over 50s and the over 65s using it. There will be a percentage of that. The breakdown of gender is 58% uh, female and 42% male. And... What's always interesting here is if I asked a class, you know, how do we access our Instagram uh, account? Everyone would probably turn around and say mobile because, you know, while you can access it on your desktop and your laptop, its functionality is is not as complete as when you do it on, on a on a mobile device. Uh, now, to tell you the truth, it is geared towards mobile devices. But what is interesting about this is that, you know, when you look at it, it's about it's about four to one um, with regards to, you know, 80% uh, of people will look at it on a mobile device and 20% and will look at it on a um, on a desktop device. So what I'm trying to say is, is don't ignore the desktop users, even though we do know they are in the minority here. Um, the time spent now, this is average, of course, and it does depend on the age group and so on with regards to how long they spend on average using this but you're talking average 15 minutes now to some you know undergrads this would be considered absolutely ridiculous because they should spend an awful lot more time on this but that's why it's an average right what does snapchat who's their audience what do they look at what are the main properties of it and so on so we'll have a quick look at this here and then we'll we'll move on from there now what is interesting about this is that snapchat um you know it's it's over 300 million um active users per month. What's it used for? Again, it's used for products, it's used for promo codes, it's used for events. But what's really interesting about Snapchat, and most people understand this, is the time nature of it. And, you know, because it's quite often, you know, Snap is put up for a very brief period of time, or a once off view, um, the whole idea of gamification comes into play, which means that, you know, an urgency, game playing urgency comes into play. What means what this means is that, you know, 
when you're asked to uh, to do something with with regards to a snap, you know, to to act in some way with regards to a snap, there is a time, um, you know, element that really does drive us to action. So it's like, for instance, if I said to you, here's a voucher for you, but you have to use it within the next, you know, 12 hours. Um, or if I said, here's a voucher for you, but you can use it in the next, you know, you know, six days or 10 days or 12 days or, you know, within the next two months. Well, the one that I'm giving you with a 12 hour time limit on, there's more chance of you acting on that because you realize that there is an urgency to this. And if you don't use it within that 12 hours, it will be uh, null and void. Whereas if there's a longer period, it's, it's easier to forget these things. And that what br it brings a kind of a, you know, an exciting element to something like Snapchat. It's so exciting and so, you know, it was so unique at the time that other people and other other um, channels have brought in stories and so on to kind of to compete with this. OK, where there, where there is a time limit again on how long something is displayed for. Um, but Snapchat were the first to do it uh, in a big way and the first to do it in such a public way. Um, now, when you look at the age group here, you can then you can again see that, you know, it is a younger age group than 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 maybe the the um Instagram is and, and, and the audience that Instagram reaches towards. And as well as that, like it does stop, you know, fairly radically at a certain age and people would say, hold on a second here now. You know, it's the one channel that people will say, I feel I'm too old for, for Snapchat. 70% female, 30% male. And it's completely, there are plugins that you can put onto your computer, but it's completely used for, uh, for mobile devices and geared towards mobile devices. And what is important here is the average minute spent per day is longer than the average minute spent um, on Instagram. Now that's an interesting one and it does depend on your particular audience. But when you think about this, because the age uh, demographic is younger, maybe that has a huge influence on the time spent on this particular channel. Third one that we're going to introduce here is Pinterest. Now Pinterest is, you know, it's a different channel because of, of the, what it actually does and what it's mainly used for. Um, now, what's interesting about this is, again, 200 million active users, which is, you know, a huge amount. Um, it's the number 10 um, social media channel by numbers. Um, but what's interesting, you have, again, products, you have company news, you know, and tips and tricks and so on. But what really is interesting about Pinterest is this word here, inspiration and infographics. So people go to Pinterest to get ideas, whether you're, you know, doing a bit of gardening or whether you're doing a bit of cooking or whether you're doing a bit of embroidering, um, you know, or whether it's a bit of woodwork or whatever it is, people go on to Pinterest to see what other people are doing and to get maybe a little bit of inspiration on what to do in a particular scenario. And that is huge. On top of that, the infographics that are on Pinterest are phenomenal. And people go there in order to use those and use them for research or use them for teaching classes or whatever they might use them for. Um, so it's a, it's a slightly different slant on what you use the channel for, OK, which is which is interesting. On top of that, you know, what's very interesting is there's a far better spread across the age groups of who uses it. So you do get older people using it and um, it does spread more evenly as uh, across the, the different age groups. So. You know, it's not something where we're, we're focusing on a certain element, you know, a certain audience, which is below 30 years of age or whatever the case might be. There are lots of different elements in this one, which is interesting. OK, 60 percent, 40 percent. We're seeing a lot of these image based channels have a predominantly female audience. But it, obviously it depends on um on, on the channel within the channel, if you understand. So if you're looking at football, obviously more than likely it'd be more of a, a male audience and so on. So it depends on the pin in Pinterest as to um, what your audience breakdown is. With regards to devices, now this is an interesting one. It's a far, again, a better spread here of mobile and desktop. Um, mainly because when you talk about something in Pinterest, you're talking about um, you know high quality images. You know, I'm not trying to say you don't get decent quality images on, on Snapchat and on Instagram, but it's less likelihood of doing so. As well as that, you know, with regards to Snapchat, even the name and, and Instagram, both of those are, are talking about instant messages, something fairly quick and, and, and uh, you know, um, 
down and dirty with regards to uh, the time that you spend creating it. Whereas in this one here, quite often the imagery that you get in Pinterest, people have spent time, effort, you know, and, and a lot of thought has gone into this. And, you know, they're actually very, very, you know, you know, if you're talking about your um, magazine quality images, okay, so they're very, very well, you know, photoshopped and edited and, you know, time and effort has gone into them. So to be quite honest, when you're talking about this, you, you are talking about people spending an awful lot of time on desktops on these and actually going in there and getting inspiration from them. And it depends on what you're trying to do. So again, you know, it's one of these channels where you do spend a bit of time on it when you get there. Okay. So, um, you know, again, the time is, is in around the same as all the other ones. Um, it, it's, it's almost exactly the same as the time spent on, um, on Instagram. But then again, these are averages we're talking about here. Okay, so what do we use Pinterest for? Well, again, arts and crafts is very, very high up there. Education, inspiration. You know, if you're looking for ideas, you know, arts, crafts, style, food, all of those kind of things, where to go on holidays, those kind of things where, where there's a high image content in there and uh, that will be, you know, it'll inspire us to, to, to take action. Okay, the last slide I'm going to look at here before we um, finish with our overview is looking at, at just the three of them um, together. Okay, we've got Instagram, we've got Snapchat and Pinterest. And a very, very common question that people will ask, especially when you're talking about maintaining it here, maintaining a channel is, how frequently should we post? Now we all realize if we post too frequently, we can annoy our customers and our audience. And if we don't post fr frequently enough, it, it can just be as, as annoying, okay? Um, so in this case here, what we have is you can see a very simple one here, one to seven times per week. So really once a day max down to once a week for Instagram. But really, you know, you don't want to be posting way too, too much more than that. If you're looking at something like Twitter, your post frequency will more than likely be higher than that. OK, with regards to Snapchat, again, you're talking about once a day um, down to, you know, two or three times a week. OK. With regards to Pinterest, you can be using pins and sharing pins a little bit more often than that. OK, so you can see here the different posting frequencies. Now these are rules of thumb and it obviously depends on what your goal of your campaign is. Now, the next one here is the use of hashtags. And this is very interesting because of the fact that, you know, quite often when a lot of us use something like Instagram, we don't particularly um, use an abundance of hashtags or if we use any at all, they're kind of like, you know, normally meant for funny hashtags and so on. Hashtags are extremely important to our posts and they're really extremely important for us to try to grow our audience. So if you're not intending on growing your audience, well, there's probably no need for hashtags. Um, but really most of us will be, one of our goals would probably be to, to reach a bigger audience and so on, okay? So you can see here, up to about 30 are used here. We'll see when we get into Instagram that the average, you know, what they're saying is a good number would be about nine. So that's a kind of magic number. But again, it's a rule of thumb. They're not popularly used with Snapchat and recommended three to five per post so for Pinterest. So you can see there's quite different, you know, tactical approaches as to the use of hashtags within these particular channels. Um, so what kind of content are we talking about? Obviously we're talking about images and we're also talking about video here. So with regards to this one here, photos and short videos, we're talking about fun and playfulness in this one here. And we're really talking about good quality images in this one here. So that's the, the, the three different types of approaches. Ideal length of video, 30 second, 10 second, and then it's based on the source video. Okay, which means you can have it longer or shorter depending on what you want for Pinterest. Content tip. Now, this is just simply what should we be doing? What should we be thinking about doing? So real photographs of real things for Instagram. Use hashtags, simple as that. All right, there's no way around that. Single focus of image. So in other words, while you can include more than one image in an Instagram post, we'll talk about that. You really shouldn't have, you should focus one post on, on have a fo single, single focus on that particular post, okay? Rather than saying we've three events coming up, here they are. You know, what I would say is, you know, maybe show, use two or three images for the one event coming up and, and then try to, try to have a purpose for that, try to achieve the purpose for that particular post, okay? With regards to Snapchat, capture people's attention, all right? Um, again, a lot of this are time element. Use that well, bring in the gamification approach, 
try and get uh, a fun element to everything that you do here. And then finally with Pinterest, you're talking about a variety of different content. So it does depend on what you're pinning and, and so on and who your audience is. And then finally, audience building tips. Again, engagement, okay. user generated co content, cross promote on your platforms. This is very, very important, okay? So quite often at the very beginning of a campaign, you'll start thinking about, oh, I'm going to use a particular channel to achieve a particular aim. But quite often there's crossover between our different channels. So don't be afraid to promote one channel on another channel. You know, for instance, you could turn around and say, for more information, check out my blog or check out my website on whatever. Okay, so you again, you're driving traffic around your different channels, which is also, you know, achieving quite often achieving your aims as well. So keep those in mind. Keep them uh, keep them to the forefront whenever decision you're making. So, um. So the last one here is post often. Okay, so you're, again, you're talking about three to fourteen times per week. So that's maybe once every two days, which is more than the rest of them is, is, is you know is uh, advising, and create searchable descriptions. In other words, keyword strong descriptions. Okay, when you do get to, you know put a little bit of text into these images, you know, make sure you uh, make them as optimized as possible for the search engine. Make sure your hashtags are, 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 are doing the job that they should be doing. And finally, you know, what I would also say about your image, make sure that they're pinnable, make sure that they're, they're, they're that you tag them properly and you, you uh, that they're searchable on, on Google, etc. cetera. 